Hello and welcome to week four of LHS 610. Today we'll be answering the question, what makes a health-related question important and answerable? The first thing to talk about is what goes into a health-related question. And one of the most common ways of asking a question that you can then try to answer based on scientific evidence is the PICO framework. And PICO basically stands for the P being patient, problem, or population, for which an example would be hospitalized patients or minority groups. The I is intervention or exposure. And so taking a blood pressure medication, uh, like a specific type of medication, would be an intervention. Smoking, on the other hand, would be an exposure because we typically wouldn't want to have a, a clinical trial or a study in which we're intervening by asking people to smoke because that would just be unethical based on what we know about smoking. So instead, we might look at uh, you know, people who are being followed, who we have data on, and just ask them, do you smoke or do you not smoke? And so in that case, smoking is an exposure. It's something that we have not asked people to do as an intervention, but we're finding out, have they been exposed to it through either them smoking or through secondhand smoke, et cetera. The C in PICO stands for comparison. So an example would be if your intervention was a specific type of blood pressure medication, a different type of blood pressure medication might be a comparison group, or not taking a blood pressure medication would be another comparison group. And so the interpretation of what you find is gonna change uh, dramatically based on what your comparison is. And the outcome might be something like having a stroke. So if we put that all together, the PICO statement can be converted into a question. And so this question that was kind of bubbling up here in our PICO statement would be, in hospitalized patients, is taking lisinopril better than taking hydrochlorothiazide when it comes to preventing stroke? So obviously that question required you to have a lot of domain knowledge about what the different medications are, what are some of the outcomes of interest, but hopefully you working with your group for the midterm project should be able to come up with something that is you know, relevant to you either in terms of you know, medical conditions that you're familiar with or disparities that you can look at um, that you've identified in liter scientific literature. When asking whether a health-related question is important, think of it as something that you're going to pitch to someone in an elevator as being a big problem. And when you want to convince someone that in this thing that you're looking at is a big problem, you'll typically want to look at the three aspects that make up the triple aim of the U.S. healthcare system. And we'll get into that in the next slide as to what that is and what your pitch might be. Another th thing to think about, and these are just things that are kind of other than the triple aim, is why hasn't the question already been answered? Um, typically, many of the important questions of the day have been investigated uh, and at least partially answered. So if this question is so important, why hasn't anyone looked into it yet? And maybe they have, and if they have answered it, maybe they haven't done it in the exact right way, or maybe it's not relevant to the context in which uh, you're asking the question. So it's useful to understand what already exists so that uh, if you're repeating what already exists, you're kind of aware of that and aware of the assumptions that have been made previously in a similar analysis. The other question you wanna know is if you're gonna make this pitch, who are you making this pitch to? So whose problem is this question addressing? Is it a patient problem? Is it a problem faced by clinicians, health insurers, others, etc.? The other two questions are interrelated. The first question is, how big of a problem is it? Um, so how many people are actually affected by the answer to this question? So there are certain types of problems that affect everyone uh, or affect a lot of people just because the condition of interest is uh, you know, present in a lot of people. So for example, diabetes is a question where any question about di diabetes, however minor, is important because of the sheer number of people who have diabetes. On the other hand, there are conditions that are rare. And in those conditions, a question might be important if it is central to that person's experience of that condition. So for example, there are diseases that are you know, uh, highly rare, but that disease is completely debilitating. And so if you can look at ways of addressing the degree of debilitation and make life easier uh, in those conditions, that would be of big interest, even though it doesn't affect that many people, 
for the people whom it affects, it really affects them greatly. And finally, if you are asking a question, you ideally want to ask a question for which an answer of yes is just as important as an answer of no. And we term that concept as equipoise. So, the, you know, if you ask a question and an answer of no would be, you know, completely not worth writing about, an answer of yes would be highly worth writing about, uh, you have to think about, is that question actually uh, worth asking? Because if an answer of no is uh, not, you know, not important, then chances are that what you're testing or what you're about to analyze is something that's pretty unlikely to be true. Uh, and that's why an answer of yes is interesting, but not an answer of no. And if it's really unlikely to be true, uh, you know, the chance that even if you find something interesting, that actually bearing out you know, in other analyses uh, is, again, likely to be very low. The three aspects of the triple aim of the U.S. healthcare system are improving health, improving the experience of care, and reducing costs. And although we aspire to achieve those three aims within the U.S. healthcare system, we're clearly not there yet. Because if you look at the amount of money we spend, and if you look at population health outcomes, like infant mortality, you know, we're among the most expensive healthcare systems out there and not among the top when it comes to these population health measures. So when, you're, when I say that, you know, uh, think of your question in the context of the triple aim, what I'm not thinking is that you're going to make a pitch to someone in an elevator saying, my question is important because it relates to the triple aim, because that obviously is not going to uh, be something that's you know, exciting to that person. And maybe they may not even know what the triple aim is, but you're going to want to reference the aspects of the triple aim. So based on the analysis I'm doing, you know, uh, the problem that I'm looking at negatively impacts health, negatively impacts the experience of care, and is you know, increasing costs. And that's why if we can look into this you know, specific, specific analysis, we might be able to find ways of improving health, improving the experience of care, and reducing costs. Let's apply that thinking to this question of whether there's a disparity in who undergoes a C-section as compared to natural birth based on race or socioeconomic status. And generally, we can all agree that on medical grounds, a disparity like this should not exist. Now, there may be reasons why you expect to find this disparity out in the scientific literature, and that's why it's important to answer this question whether or not the answer is yes or no, you know, because you expect to find it. Uh, and so if you find it, that's important because it should not exist. And if you don't find it, that's important because it's contrary to what was expected. So if you're on an elevator and you need to make a pitch to someone, you're going to think about the three aspects of the triple aim. Uh, which are improving health, improving the care, of, uh, uh, improving the experience of care, and reducing the cost. As you think about how to highlight your problem statement uh, to this person and get their attention. So here's an example of a pitch I might make to someone: C sections are expensive as compared to natural birth. If there is one group that's getting more C sections than another group, then that group is essentially costing the health system a lot more money than they possibly should be costing. We know that C-sections are associated with risks to maternal health. People are undergoing a surgery. There's risks of surgery, uh, and there's risks of pain and mental distress that follow a C-section. And we know that people stay in the hospital longer, and longer hospital stays are linked to, pe to patients uh, feeling that their experience of care is not good. They're not satisfied when they undergo a C-section if they could have undergone uh, a natural uh, childbirth. So based on this, it's important to look at disparities because if we find a disparity, then there's a group out there that's costing more money than they should, having worse outcomes and having a worse experience of care. And that's something that we can potentially fix. And again, I kind of made those assertions about cost and about uh, you know, health outcomes and about patient satisfaction. But if I was writing this up as a pitch that's you know, written as a proposal or as a paper, I'd wanna make sure that all of my assertions are backed up by scientific evidence.